Welcome to Let's Model Episode 2. And in this episode, we are going to model a modular sci-fi wall like this. It's going to have little panels of vents on the bottom, a little bit of extrusion going in the front with a slight bevel at the, at the bottom to create nice soft curvature. And then, of course, we're going to cut out the window and curve the inner corners. And for this one, I'm actually going to create the front and the back. So the back of this wall will be slightly different. So this way I can use it by simply rotating 180 degrees and I will have two different types of walls to use that will look slightly different from the front and the back. Just something I wanted to experiment with. So I'm only going to go through and model this specific wall with the window cutout. However, using this exact same method, I went ahead and did a quick modeling for the rest of the pieces. So to create a small modular set. So using the same techniques here, since this was more complex mesh to create, the rest of it Using the same techniques, I created the wall, half a wall, a rounded column, and a corner piece. So let's begin modeling this wall. I'm going to start with a cube. And let's start setting the sizes in centimeters, the dimensions for it. Since this is going to be a modular wall, I usually like to use whole values. And for this wall, I want width and height to be 300 by 300. This is a pretty good size for the wall. And then for depth, I'm going to set it to 20. And let's do height baseline and place it on top of the grid to negative one. Then uh, let's go ahead and start splitting this up because we're going to have a window cut out. We're also going to have some uh, vents on the bottom. So we need to introduce a lot more edges. I could introduce edges in the using subdivisions, but I, instead I'm going to use multi-cut and insert edges that way. So let's go to model and toolkit and multi-cut. We'll do pretty much everything we need for this. So I'm going to hold control and left click to insert a lower cut. This is where the vents, the two vents are going to be. And I want to make sure that uh, there's a certain amount of units that I want this to be up here. Uh, so I want about 20 units, maybe a little bit more, uh, but 20 I think should be fine. So I'm going to actually select the verts and I'm going to snap them to the grid. Uh, I don't need to snap these verts to the grid. I can just freestyle and just move them around. But uh, I just like to create my modular pieces or any geometry as precise as I can, especially if it's architecture. So I like to kind of snap things to the grid as much as I can, just out of habit. And then I also want to place uh, two edges on the side. So that way we, we begin to create an area where the cutout window is going to be. So let's use multi-cut again. And actually I'm going to jump over to front view. So I'm going to insert one here, control left click. Control left click to insert another edge at the top. And then I'm going to insert one here and one here. Right now I'm just kind of inserting to create the area where the window will be. And then I, of course, I want to go ahead and start lining these up. So they're equal distance on each side away from each other. So let's go to vertices. So on the side, let's do, we can do 20 or 30 units. I want to have a little bit of a border. Let's do 20 units on each side, like so. So I'm snapping them to the grid by holding down X and dragging to snap. And then for the top, this is where I want the beginning of the top of the frame for the window. So at the top, I probably do, let's do 50 units. And I'm, I'm always looking at my uh, human reference. And that kind of determines and tells me where should I insert those edges, how tall the window opening should be, how wide it should be. It really helps me to determine the proportions of the wall and the architecture to create. And uh, for this, I want it to be about 100 units from the bottom. So right, maybe about here, 100, between 80 and 100 units. So I'm just imagining the characters walking around they should be able to walk up and just see through the window just fine so it shouldn't appear too disproportionate to the character. And maybe raise it up to about hip level. All right, let's go back to perspective. And here we kind of have our wall template blocked out with uh, all the geometry we need. Uh, on the bottom, I do want to have two vent panels. So I need to split this in half actually. So I'm going to multi-cut again and hold control and just middle mouse click. So it places right in the center. And for these two edges, I'm going to actually remove them. So that way I just get the entire two quads on each side. So let's hit delete and remove them. So that way I'll be able to extrude and create that interior detail using the entire face. 
and then we'll fix whatever end guns we create and uh, things to optimize later. Early on, uh, you shouldn't worry about optimizing your meshes. Just create as best as you can. Model. Fix what you need to fix in the moment so you don't create bad geometry. But don't worry too much about optimizing early on. And now let's go ahead and delete these faces right here. That's going to be our window cutout. And let's create the face in between. So for this, I'm going to go to edge component mode. And in order to create faces, you can just bridge between two selected edges. So select two edges and then bridge them. And you can do this for all of these. And to speed things up, once you've applied a command, if you press G, this will repeat last use command. In our case, it's bridge. Very quick and useful shortcut to speed things up. Now let's go ahead and create a bit more detail just for these faces right here. So I'm going to select them and I want to extrude them out because I want to have a nice transition right here. I want to have this extruded, all these faces, and then I want to bevel out so we have a nice rounded corner in the bottom. And for the back, we're going to keep it flat and I'm only going to possibly extrude these two faces. So the reason I'm doing this is that this way I will have two different versions of the same wall. On one side, I'll have one type of detail with some vents and on the other side, it'll be more flat and more simpler. And that way I can reuse the wall in different ways with that extra detail. Just simply by rotating the wall to the other side, I'll have a different type of wall. Now this may not work in every case, but the way I'm planning this out, that's what I want to do for this specific mesh. So now let's go ahead and take these faces. I'm going to press control E to extrude. And I'm going to add some thickness to this. So let me just come over here and I'm just going to see how much of a thickness I want to add. So let's try three, maybe four. I think four should be enough. And then I'm going to select these edges right here all the way across. And it looks like I've selected a wrong face. So this is, uh, you have to be very careful of that you select all the faces you want to extrude. It looks like I messed up. So let me undo. And let me deselect this one and select this one. Let me double check now. And let's do another extrude, control E and thickness of four. Now, everything looking good. Let's select those edges in the bottom and we're gonna bevel them out and create a round corner in the bottom and press control B to bevel. For this, I want to have two segments and since this is going to be on the bottom, I'm not too worried about introducing too many segments. I just want to round the corner, uh, but it's uh, not going to be very much seen by the player. So I don't need to do any more segments than two. Usually two segments for round the corners is enough for games. Unless it's a bigger object and sometimes you're going to be visible in view at eye level to the player. Right, let's go back to object mode and just inspect it. I'm going to turn off wireframe, alt 5, and just take a look at the mesh. See if uh, there's any problems. All right, all five for wireframe and shaded back on. For the other side, I'm going to select these two faces right here and I'm going to extrude them out. So instead of doing the same thing we did on the other side, I'm going to vary this up and just kind of invert the selection and I'm going to extrude these out for units. And let's take a look how the bevel will look on these. I mean, I want to round them out, but I probably will. So let's do control B. Let's do two segments. And uh, yeah, I like that border. I think it adds a little bit of uh, interesting detail on the bottom. So let's do that for the other side. Now for the bottom here, I want to extrude these two faces in and create a panel where vents would go. Most of the details for the vents are going to come from a texture, but I want to define where that is going to go. So we need to extrude these two faces. So I'm going to select them, control E to extrude, and we're going to offset. However, when I offset, it's going to offset them together. Instead, I'm going to keep faces together off. And uh, so they're treated individually. And the amount of offset that I want to do is 2.5. Now uh, let's go three. And then let's extrude them inside. Control E and add thickness. So let's do negative two. And that should be good enough. Let's take a look, kind of uh, zoom out a little bit. Kind of see it, try to see it from a player's point of view. And that should give us some detail on the bottom. And then I'm gonna just duplicate it really quick. Just kind of judge the walls 
together and see how that detail repeats. All right, that looks good. Let's delete them. Now let me come back really quick and uh, just analyze the soft and hard edges. Usually when you bevel, uh, some edges are going to be hard edges. And uh, right here, if I hold shift, right click hold, and then uh, soften and harden edge and then toggle soft edge display. Yeah, as I, as I suspected, usually when you bevel, one of the edges is a hard edge. And I want this to be more rounded and smooth. So I'm going to select these edges right here. The one that are showing up as a solid line. And then I'm going to turn them into a soften edge. So it kind of rounds out that bottom. And then on this side as well, we have one edge going all the way across. So I'm going to select them all. And then uh, let's uh, soften hard edge and soften the edges here. Just small adjustment. Just from based from experience, I knew that bevel usually tends to do that. Now we are ready to begin dealing with the interior and rounding the corners out for the window. I'm going to select the interior corners. Now double click to select all these. We have an extra edge because we extruded that outside, which is fine. We can deal with that. Or we can uh, even, we can optimize it. So let me see. I'm thinking if it might be easier when we deal with uh, the rounding of the corners to maybe remove this edge. Um, I'm going to keep it for now. See what happens. So I'm going to make sure that I select all the edges on the inside on each corner. And then we're going to bevel them. So I should have eight edges selected and I have this poly heads up display always available to me yeah, so I can always check my selection, which is going to be available right here. This is uh, the third column will display everything that you have available to you selected. And if you don't see this heads up display, go to display heads up display and enable poly count. All right, with those edges selected, let's bevel them and see what happens. Control B. All right, that's looking good. Now all we need to do is adjust the fraction and the amount of segments. So for the fraction, I think 0.5 should be good, but segments, so let's increase the amount of segments. Let's go up to four to round that out. And let's go to front view so I can see how that runs out. Let's try five. Yeah, four should be enough. I don't need that too uh, high poly. We could go higher. But why go higher if it doesn't really add anything other than additional uh, vertices and edges to deal with? So four should be enough. That gives me one, two, three, four, five edges total. One that was already there and four added on top. Now that I know there's no problem, let's go ahead and uh, remove this edge. I don't think I need it. Um, let's keep it for the moment, just for a moment, because I think I want to add additional piece of geometry, a uh, slight small border where the glass would be placed and positioned. So I'm probably going to keep this edge for now. And then now let's do a pass, a bevel pass on this edge all the way around. Because right now it's a 90 degree corner. I want to go ahead and bevel this once and introduce a slight angle. And I want to do this for both sides. So I'm going to select them both on each side and just double check that I have everything selected. Just always double check that you have your selections made and everything selected because it's a lot harder to fix things if you mess up. If you just not select a single edge, you bevel and creates a mess for you to fix if you don't see it right away. Let's bevel, control B. And uh, this is way too much of a bevel, so I'm gonna lower this to 0 0.25. Let's do 0 0.3. Let's deselect it. I'm gonna press Alt 5 to go to wireframe off so I can see that that one single bevel because this is more of a concrete wall, so I don't need a more rounded corner. So it creates a nice transition, so it's not a 90 degree corner. And uh, just catches that highlight for light very nicely. Adds a nice touch of detail. Just one single bevel. All right, so this is what we have so far. It's looking pretty good. Let's add glass. Glass is going to be done with a single plane. One quadded plane. So I'm going to create a plane, go to channel box, and let's start typing the numbers. I could just resize it, but I'm just going to set width to, let's do 280. Height, let's do um, 250 to start with, and I want to rotate this. So I'm going to hold down J and rotate to rotate snap. 
Let's go to front view. I'm going to drag this up. So the height is way too much. I just want to be able to fit this inside the space. So let's modify the height to uh, 200. That should be enough. Maybe even less to uh, 180. And side to side is good. I also want to disable subdivision width and height from 10 down to 1 or change it. And then let's take a look. It's already uh, nicely in the center of this. And I'll probably move it a little closer so it is more centered. So let's uh, take this right here and I'm going to remove this edge. Now we are ready to deal with the interior and create a, a small, small tiny border so where the glass would be held in positions. Right now it just kind of looks odd if we have glass and then we have kind of it's going right into the concrete of the mesh. So let me delete this edge. The way you delete edges, and this is very important, that if you just select a set of edges and you hit delete, you're going to leave a vertex floating. So when you switch over, you see you have a bunch of vertices floating around. So in order to delete edges properly and the vertices that are attached with those edges, you need to press Control Delete. So that way you don't have those verts floating. And then let me move this glass temporarily off to the side. So right in here, we can go ahead and insert the single edge and then build up that small piece of the frame. I'm going to go back to Model and Toolkit and enable Multicut. I'm going to hold down Control and Middle Mouse Click to place it right in the center. Then I'm going to switch over to Edges and I'm going to select by double clicking to select that entire edge loop all the way around. And uh, I need extra geometry here, so all I have is an edge. So I could do another multi-cut and edge, but with the way I like to do things is you introduce one single edge, and then you, if you bevel that edge, it's going to give you that extra edge right next to it in the center. So if I bevel this edge, Control B, you can see that it kind of takes the other edge and splits it into two, and it's already equal distance apart from each other. And all I need to do is adjust a fraction to maybe make it a little tighter. So let's do 1.5. 0.15. Uh, let's try 0.2. I think that's uh, going to be a little too thick. Let's do 0.15. I think that's pretty good distance. Also, before you start adding more detail, let's go ahead and duplicate this and make a copy. So I have a copy. So if, if I'm going to make some drastic changes to the mesh, which is going to be hard to fix, I like to make a copy and then come back and then introduce and kind of experiment with the detail. If the detail looks good, then I keep it. If it doesn't, then I come back to the original mesh, duplicate it, and try another uh, run at it until I find the right dimensions, distances, and then added detail. So now let's switch over to face component mode. I'm going to select one face, hold down shift, double click on the face next to it. It's going to select all the way around. And uh, let's extrude. Control E. And uh, let's add thickness. And uh, let's do thickness of, let's try five. That's too much. I think that's way too big of a border. Five uh, centimeters. Let's do three. That's much better. Let's try four. I'm kind of looking at this and uh, just trying to judge it. I'm judging it based on just kind of the overall distance of everything. I think three should be good. And let's position the glass back in so we can see it on both sides. So I'm going to reset this back in channel box. I'm going to translate it on Z to zero. So it's going to be right in the center where it was created. And then it looks like I need to just move it a little further. And just check on both sides. And actually I can go to top view. I'll zoom in a little closer so I can position it right in the center. Right, like so. Alright, and that looks pretty nice on both sides. There's enough thickness that it looks believable. Alright, so here's what we have so far. Our last step is to do an optimization pass. We have a lot of floating verts that we need to, that don't add anything to it and all these are just that don't add anything to geometry. So we need to fix this and optimize it, making it a lot cleaner. And for this, we're going to use target weld. Also, as we've been modeling, we have not deleted history. So I recommend you delete history throughout your modeling process so you avoid any problems. So I'm going to select everything and delete history on this object. And now let's go to model and toolkit, enable target weld. I'm going to switch over to vertices first and then target weld. And let's start fixing this. So the way you target weld is you simply left click, hold and drag one vert over another, and it will move the first vert, place it on top of another, and merge them together. And we can just do this for all of 
our geometry here and then take this one and drag it over to the top so let's take this one and fix this one target well these let's come over here and target well that one and i'm going to leave this for now uh, until we are ready to fix this let's do the other corner as well so let's target weld all of these together and drag it to the top and then drag and target weld that word and now let's target weld this one when uh, we're dealing with this side right here um i kind of like to avoid having very long narrow triangles so for this right here this is fine it's not too much of a distance of these triangles um, if I start target welding these triangles all the way to the bottom, um, I'm going to run into an issue where uh, a lot of long, small triangles, first of all, they don't look good on topology. Most of the time they render out fine, but when you look at a wireframe of a model, it's just something's off. It's just, I don't like those long triangles. So I'm not too worried about making the super low poly because we did bevel a lot of edges. So we're not going for super low poly. So uh, when it comes to this case right here, I really don't want to drag these and create those long, small triangles. So I'm actually going to keep this edge and I'm going to target weld a lot of these a little closer. And let's do one more. So that will avoid quite a few problems. And let's do the same thing on the other side. Drag this one, this one, target weld this one. And now that long one, I really don't like it. And see how I, that's a long, small triangle. I don't like that one either. So actually, let me undo. And for this one, I'm actually going to drag it all the way down to that vert, like so. Or what I could do is I could weld that one right here. And then maybe I could just maybe move this edge down a little further to open that triangle up. Let's see if that will work. So if I just bring it down a little lower, that should be okay. Yeah, I'll probably do that. Let's go to the other side and uh, target about the other side. And all these verts over here. Let's go ahead and fix this one. And anytime you target weld, sometimes around the edges, Maya doesn't understand if it should keep cer certain edges hard edge or soft edge. So what happened here is uh, that edge became a soft edge. So it's trying to round out the corner. So we'll fix that. Um, I'll have a lot of edges that are not necessary here. So I'm actually going to switch over to edge component mode. And I'm going to select all these edges right here. And delete them. Control delete. Clean that up. Let's fix this edge right here. The way you fix this is you simply turn that edge to a hard edge. So I'm going to hold down shift, right click hold, soften harden edge, and harden that edge. And that's fixed. Now let's take a look how we can fix this. Actually, let me delete these unnecessary edges right here. Control delete. So I don't leave any floating vertices. And then I'm going to take these verts right here and just drag them down a little bit to open this up. And again, if I drag this all the way down, the problem with, actually it might work. If I drag it all the way down, those small I'm not a fan of that small triangle, but I think we should be okay. So that way, uh, if I drag it all the way down and just keep this, so yeah, let's try that. So I'm going to switch over to target weld and make sure I have no uh, vertices selected. And now I'm going to click off of uh, the, the mesh. So no vertices are selected, and then I'm going to start welding. So let's weld this one. And yeah, that one's okay. I think that one's going to be just fine. Not a fan, uh, like I would try, probably try to have a little bit more space, but I think, yeah, I think that should be okay. And then for this one, I'm just going to target all this one to the bottom. So I'm just kind of looking at this area right here and that, that looks good. I don't need to optimize this right here because uh, on export or import into a game engine, this will be triangulated for me. But if I wanted to, uh, I could just use multi-cut and just uh, triangulate this myself manually, like so. And that would be done. And this one, I can also do it myself by just 
creating another little triangle. So that looks good. Let's uh, deal with this edge. So that one does not add anything to this. It's actually going across to the other side of the model, to this side. So let's select them all and delete them. For this corner right here, we can target weld that one. Actually, let's uh, select the verts. The way I like to use target weld is uh, at a vert level because you can target weld edges, but I like to target weld very specific and uh, mainly verts, not edges. But you can also target weld edges, but you gotta be careful. That's too easy to mess up your model. So let's target weld that one and uh, make that edge uh, a hard edge. All right, so that's half of our mesh. Let's take a look at the top, see if everything's looking good. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna speed this up and do the same exact thing on the other side. So I'm gonna time-lapse this, speed it up so you don't have to watch me do the other side, but I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. I could, actually, I could half mirror this model to the other side, but I'm gonna do uh, the other side manually and repeat the same steps. Um, I do wanna just maybe delete this one right here. Control delete, those edges, not necessary. And let's double click on this and try to delete some of those. Gotta be careful though not to delete some of the ones in the center that I, I actually need. So uh, let's deal with the center and then I'll speed up the other side. So when you look at the bottom, we have a few verts right here. So let's target weld. Let's go back to vertices. And I'm going to target weld this vertex. And I'm gonna leave, just trying to decide, let me get rid of the grid for a moment. Target weld this one. And then I'll come back to that. It gave us another problem area. So I'll fix that with the hard edge. So there is an edge right here that goes all the way up. So I have to figure out what to keep and what not to keep. So actually all these edges in the center are unnecessary. So let's delete those. For this edge, I do want to keep because we do have that connection in the center. And I don't want to target weld some of these because that's going to be a really long triangle to the other side. So I'm going to keep this one. And that's the one I'm, I'm going to target weld to one side. Let's target weld right to that one. Like so. So that way we don't uh, break up and kill this topology and this detail right here. Let's do the same thing on this side. To the other side. So here's what we have. I'm just checking because it's a uh, different uh, geometry. So I'm just checking to make sure that um, I may not even need uh, that one. I could probably get away with uh, doing something on the bottom. So maybe taking this one, target weld into that one. So that's going to be that triangle. And then taking all these edges right here from this one to this one and deleting them. Control delete. And just checking and making sure that I did not break my model anywhere. All right, that looks pretty good. And now let's let me fix the hard soft edges by turning that one to a hard edge. All right, always double check whenever you're doing this to make sure that you are not creating more problems. And I'm just kind of moving verts around just to make sure that uh, nothing's been left over. All right, so now I'm ready to. Uh, do the same pass on this side. So I'm going to speed this part up. All right, then here we are. Finished double-sided modular wall with a rounded corner windows. Let's go ahead and I'm going to take this. I'm going to duplicate it and just position it next to it just so we can see. And we can we have both sides, so one side is different from the other, gives us a little bit of variety. Next step would be for you to UV your object, and of course texture it, bring it into your game engine, into Unreal Engine 4 or 5, and then you'll be able to use it to construct your environment with. Now, in just this single tutorial in this uh, episode 2 of Let's Model, I went through a lot of shortcuts, a lot of tools, a lot of optimization techniques, so if you want to have this slow down a little bit more for you. If you are a beginner in Maya and you want to create environments and modular assets and props 
for your environments just like this one and many other similar ones using the techniques in Maya for how to model as well as how to UV so you can texture it. Take a look at Maya Foundation. This is a complete home study course for how to get started with Maya, how to model and how to UV your objects.